my peoples, we back again. What's going on, Ted? <laughs> What's up, Gramps? All right, Nana Do. So today's today's topic is the friends we love and why we love them. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be no limit to um, what it is, how many friends you want to choose or talk about, but. Um, ladies first so name a friend somebody in your life that you love and tell us why do you love them so oh my goodness oh um, yeah put them on the spot and it do oh my gosh um, yeah this is actually putting me on the spot but I will probably say okay my gay boyfriend Alan <laughs> okay shout out to her gay boyfriend alan <laughs> um alan sir alan or um Al- alan oh is it not uh spelled with an a no it's o oh wow okay shut me down olin mm-hmm. alan. alan oh alan excuse me okay alan not alan but I alan yes you know alan. english is not my strong suit <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so um Alan, I have known Alan. Actually, I've known Alan longer than I've known you. Wow. Okay. I know, right? Um I met him when I met him before I turned 21. So I was 20 years old when I met Alan. Okay. And we worked for the same lighting company and you know, he is, I was a pain in my, mm-hmm. everything, right? But he is the dearest and sweetest heart. And he means, like, he wants the best for people. Like, he wants to see people, op, op, act, um, he wants to see people <laughs> operating at optimal capacity like he wants you to bring your best to everything that you do and he wants you to get the best and he wants you to have the best right. um and he will talk about you if you don't oh my god um um and it's crazy because he's he's getting older yeah and um he's getting younger excuse me i'm sorry he's getting younger but he is just he will he will cut a bitch for you like he will cut a bitch for you um yeah um when i think about my friends right so i named alan and what we'll talk about more when i think about friends initially i always think about the ones i'm i'm drawn to the the ones that will help me hide a body right right so my girlfriend dreamy um which is karima uh brio ichi um she, I always laugh about Karima because I'm like, Karima is ride or die. Right. If Karima, if you kill somebody, right, mm-hmm. and you were trying to hide their bodies, right. and I'm not condoning killing and I don't think that you should. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you accidentally kill somebody um, and you needed help hiding the body and you called Karima, she would come, right? And if you decided that you were gonna dismember the body, um, you know, and you would be doing it, she would be like, Ange, Ange, let me do this. <laughs> and she would be like, see, this is what you gotta do. And you do too much. Why you didn't kill him outside? <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. I was defending myself. That's why it happened in the house, right? But you couldn't defend yourself outside while she's helping you do what it is. She's telling you off and complaining about it and really telling you how you should have done this differently. But she's helping you. And she will take to the grave that she did it. She's not like one of those that talk, you know, talk your business behind your back or now y'all are not cool. And she's yeah. telling how you was sucking all kinds of stuff in the closets or whoever you, she's not that kind of friend. So when I think about like, yeah, so my dearest heart, you know, my dearest one of my dearest is is Alan, um, and my other one is Dreamy. I call her Kadreamy. Okay. Look, and the crazy thing is, whatever I call her is what she answers to. <laughs> whatever I call her is what she answers to. Damn. 
<laughs> because it's always something sweet or but but she know you know the crazy thing is like she knows i'm talking to her right. like, there's a room full of people and i say sally she's gonna answer she knows i'm talking to her <laughs> she knows you're talking to her huh? right okay okay what about you well for me um, I'm gonna try to touch on the names on this list, but these are the oh, people. You wrote the names on the list, Bob. Yeah, okay. uh, because I, you, but trust me, it's a short list. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a very short list. I'm not even going to mention you, Nana Do, because it's obvious you are very, very the the best friendedest of them all so that 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 goes without saying so same I, same here I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna mention you but you know why <laughs> okay but okay. so this is this is the short list right mm -hmm. all right my boy pete the better the second half or the better half of the bounty hunters all right um james and joyce Right, my friends from my work, my boy mm -hmm. Frank Remarks, uh, my neighbor uh, Damon, and uh, and also a good friend from back of the days who still keeps in contact with me to this day, which is Nut, my man Nut, who's currently right, residing, uh, you know, and he goes by a few names. I mean, I, I call him Nut because that's what we called him in high school, uh, but most people call him Bruce or Brewster. You know, some people call him Austin professionally mm -hmm. he's known as dj slice he was the dj for finesse sequist if anybody remembers that rap um rap duo females from you the told me that. 80s yes because okay. right. uh in Quiz, which was the dark the darker of the two girls is his sister mm -hmm. that's his baby sister oh okay so yeah and we were all high school friends and mm -hmm. uh and also he goes by dj lord hannibal because he's still an active dj even though he's been going through some hard times um in medical recent stuff. years medical stuff recovering from <laughs> medical stuff and um he's healing well and hopefully he'll get back on his grind and uh you know take over saint thomas basically <laughs> hey, hey. um so i'm what, what i'm going to try not to do is go into too much detail of the loving details of the people that i have on on that list so what i'll try to do is just try to get to key points now uh, um so my boy pete who is uh better as far as our, our rap career is we're concerned is pay one you know part of our group the bounty hunters mm -hmm. and he's a, a couple years older than me and um he was uh introduced to me uh by a neighborhood friend um george lawrence aka uh dj asiatic um, so an Asiatic, this guy, I could do a whole video on this guy. He's kind of one of the unsung, uh, DJs from our old neighborhood back in, um, left rack city in Corona slash Regal Park, uh, Queens, depending on, I wanted to be hoity toity. So I always refer to it as Regal Park. You know what I'm saying? If you're real, you're like, yeah, it's Corona. I'm like, no, I'm from Regal Park, left rack city. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, George has had his finger on everything. I mean, George brought us together. I mean, he was one of the guys that was taking, you know, Nori, a.k.a. Noriega around when he first got out of, you know, jail. I mean, I was filming a video one day and he brought Noriega to, you know, one of our video shoots before he got on and, you know, and blew up. Everybody knows who Nori is. But anyway, Pete, um, this is a gentleman where even when he raises his voice, he does it in a way he just knows how to talk to people. You know, oh, yeah. he has a seriousness. Uh, he's funny as all hell. You know, he's not a <laughs> stick in the mud by any stretch of the imagination. But he has a way of talking and communicating people with him when you know he's dead ass with every word he says to you. You know, I mean, he's pro black. He's Puerto Rican, pure blood. Mother, daddy, both Puerto Rican from Puerto Rico. And, uh, and but he looks to be what we stereotypically would consider African American. But, you know, he's fully rooted in, uh, you know, his blackness. Um, but very well knows that he's, you know, Puerto Rican. But like I said, I just love the man because like he's been a true friend the entire time I've known him. He's never, you know, when when I was short on money and we had things to do as a group, he always came up with it and uh, never 
where's my money? Where's my, you know, n- never none of that. And of course, I've done that for him. You know, if something was needed, I would just get it. And I've never asked him to give something back to me like, oh, like, yo, remember that 20 looks I put in for you or whatever? Like, no, we've never done that to each other. So he's a true blue friend. Shout to him and his beautiful family, his daughters and his wife, Kat. Um, second on my, my list. Cousin. Huh? Your cousin. I cousin yeah, you know, I know. Oh, well, okay. So Pete is near and dear to, to, to Graham's here also because when she was working for Duntorian Company, which is our management company, that's how we all met through Duntorian Company. Mm-hmm. So we pretty much met at the same time. Me, Pete, and Graham's, we all met at the same time, more or less. So, um, you know, she she knows him very well and, you know, and has much love for him and stuff like that, as he does so her much. and stuff like that. So, so that that's the brief history there. We can probably we might get into that another day. Um, <laughs> James and Joyce. So James and Joyce are two people I met when I started working at my job back in 1991. These were the first friends I met at the job and have and have remained friends to this day. Joyce is actually the godmother of my oldest son, Dante. Uh, two, be- two beautiful people, like heart, as far as heart and uh, just realness, they're equal in that. You know, say so where they both will give you the shirt off their back, they're equal to that regard. It's, the, the differences are in their personalities where James is pure street Harlem and got that hustler vibe to him and then got the, got a cold way of staring through you like steely eyes whereas Joyce is like you know a, a flower growing out of the asphalt I mean Joyce is like the sweetest like I have there's not been a person that's met Joyce has not loved her, her smile her hugs her warmthness um just too beautiful souls who are dear dear friends of mine also you know james has played a role of like a father figure to me at times in my life like when i'm all about you know uh you know my sneakers and you know and when i will wear shoes they'd be like oh go to tom mccann and get the 30 dollar joints and stuff like that and he was the first one I'm like nah you need a pair of shoes I'm going to take you shoes shopping. You have to spend some real money. You ain't going to spend no $30 on no goddamn shoes. I'm warning you. You coming with me, you spending the minimum $200. You know, ended up spending $300 on a pair of shoes. And, you know, and as he explained it to me, when you put on a pair of real shoes, it should feel like sliding in some pussy. Okay, <laughs> get no cheap ass shit from no Tom McCann and all that. Go get you some real shoes. You know what I'm saying? So he put me on to that. You know, um, he's a, a a tailor by trade. So um, there's a lot of you know aspects like how to you know properly um, you know get something tailored and you know and how to pick a suit out and thread counts and you know and you know these are things that I've learned from this man. Um, all right. Third. Is- uh, well, I have I have to inter- interject because you know yeah. how I feel about Joyce. Yeah. I met her one time and I love Joyce. I love, and the thing that's like seared into my mind about Joyce is her smile. Yes. Oh my the God. The warmest smile. Like, I have never seen, cause she, yeah, she, she just makes you want to put your head on her shoulder and just just hug her and, and just like let her feed you and uh, oh and I've God, done that her. many a time I've done just that especially I'm, they're both retired now but back when we worked together sometimes I'd walk into her apartment and I just like yo I just walk up and I would hug her and just like I would squeeze her and just put my head on her shoulder and like you know mm-hmm. and you would see other people do that other people and we're talking about people from around the world Chinese Polish Russian uh, Indian Bangladesh it didn't matter who you was or what your cultural upbringing was and stuff like that everybody responded to this woman the same way because that's how she makes you feel no matter who you are what your background is where you come from when you get to know this woman and you're around her that's how you feel when you're around her that's how special she is you need to call them yeah I do I okay. do. All right. So third on this list is my boy Frank Remarks. Uh, Frank Remarks is my my production brethren. Uh, I met him um, commuting back and forth from the Poconos to New York years ago. You know, we we met on the bus and found that we had music in common and similar past um, experiences uh, in common. Even though he was younger than me, um, and Frank's demeanor. He is the smoothest, even-teeled, most 
thoughtful he thinks everything through like nothing comes out his mouth without him thinking it through and he could process information very quickly um so it's not like he has to pause to 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 come up with whatever he's going to come up with but frank is so smart and when you need guidance on something or you need to bounce something off of somebody he's the perfect person to bounce stuff off of because even if he doesn't know he's one of those people who can assimilate information really quick and he can adapt very quickly to what it is that's going on even if he doesn't have you know innate knowledge of it um but um you know he, he's another just like a true friend like if you need something like if i call him right now out, outside of him having to do something for his family or something work related if i'm like yo i need this and i need you to come through or whatever he's like i'm there that's the type of dude he's always been since i've known him um we've loaned each other production equipment being that we're both we're both mcs we're both music producers and we're both writers um and during our time knowing each other we've collaborated and um we borrow equipment from each other and stuff like that and uh you know what i'm saying he's he's always been you know an ace you know beautiful family beautiful wife um two beautiful little girls and i knew him before he i, I met him when he was married but um he didn't have his children so um you know, I've got to, uh, you know, see him be a father to his daughters. And tell, I mean, as far as a man being a, fa- a father to his daughters, is he's practically unrivaled when it comes to that. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good dude and, you know, and he's been true blue to me. And that's why I love the man. Mm-hmm. Uh, fourth on this list is another neighbor of mine up in Apopolo is my man, Damon. This is a man, and and I'm going to sidebar, and I'm going to say his wife, Doreen, his ex-wife, Doreen, um, who were instrumental in raising my children in the early years. They were basically a second mom and a second dad to my children, and they were true blue uh, to my family from Jump Street, Um, even to the point where, as without getting into it, where shit was kind of going sideways with my relationship, and things started to get sloppy. And, you know, and they had to tell, you know, my uh, my ex, like, look, I don't know what's going on with y'all in your house, but yo, but don't bring that shit over here. All right. Next time it gets sloppy. You know what I'm saying? We will be blowing the whistle. You know, we, we, we will be blowing the fucking spot up, you know, but that's how good friends they were to me. And uh, like I said, my children, they were instrumental and making my two guys who are, you know, great young men, the men that they are today, because they're two children, you know, Damon and, and Nia, um, who are also like my second, um, my my son and my daughter. And Nia, she makes my heart melt. That's my little princess. If I had a daughter, Nia's my little princess. See, you see me melting? <laughs> I don't, I'm, thank God oh, I don't have a daughter. You better, you better not, 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 you better not let Brandon <laughs> <laughs> Look, Raina has a special part in my heart. That's that's separate. Raina, my little baby Rain, that's something totally separate. But Nia, like, you know, Nia is like, even though I knew Raina when she was a baby, uh, but Nia is like known her since she was born, little baby, and you know, and watched her grow up with my sons, you know, uh, both their children. So it was one of those scenarios where their children or our children were practically inseparable. Uh, especially in the elementary years, in the preschool and elementary years. They were practically mm-hmm. inseparable. Um, mm-hmm. And basically, Doreen was a stay-at-home mom. And, uh, you know, and she would, you know, take my kids in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon for school, take them to after-school programs or whatever her kids did. It was like that. If she said, hey, I've been rolling my kids in soccer, it was like, well, we enrolling them in soccer too. That way you ain't got to go out of your way to do nothing special. So when one go to soccer, all four go to soccer. They all out of here. You know, so um, they've been great friends and a great help to my family um, when I was establishing that. And, you know, and Damon is one of those who's also if you need anything, I call him. You know, he's there. You know, um, he's been there for me when um, I needed someone to speak to from a male point of view when I was going through it. And I've done the same for him when he was going through it. And he's a good dude. And uh, so he's another person that I consider a friend and I love him dearly. And last but not least on this list is my man Nut, <laughs> a.k.a. DJ Slice, a.k.a. DJ Lord Hannibal. So Uh-oh. most people in our lives call him Bruce or Brewster, you know, some call him Alston or whatever, but I call him Nut because that's what we called him in high school. Um, so his claim to fame is he was the DJ 
for um, a rap group Finesse. called Finesse Sequis. Yes, mm-hmm. back in the '80s, um, and they they were um, female rap group. They were they were one of the founding groups for Uptown MCA. So when you think when you think Jodeci, when you think Mary J. Blige, well before Jodeci and Mary J. Blige, it was Heavy D, Finesse Sequis, Brothers Black, Woody Rock. Uh, Molly Mall. These were the cats that made up the Uptown Kicking It crew under Andre Harrell for Uptown Records when they first came out. So, Nut was the DJ, you know, DJ Slice for for that's a quiz. So we met in high school, and uh, him and our departed friend Charlie, who we miss dearly. I be mean, I still dream about this guy to this day, like it's crazy. Um, but um, those two, that they, they were tight. They were tight to the point whereas like he would like get rid of his dj equipment and go with this guy on the road and they would just move from state to state they'd be living here living there just because i don't know it was one big great adventure for them when we were younger um but he's always kept in contact with me and to this day we're still in close contact and um like i said i mean i got love for all my high school buddies the funky fresh five (laughs) you know mel manny cisco um and mark uh, by default, uh, my man um, Dave B. Black and, uh, and, and, and True Born God Allah. <laughs> uh, you know, I got love for all those guys, but, you know, a Nut is the one that I've kept in contact with uh, the most um, over the years. <laughs> And like I said, just genuine friends. I mean, that's the classic, like, you know, basically not necessarily from diapers, but, you know, from high school years, uh, you know, this guy has been um, a good friend. We didn't hang out too tight back, um, too tight back then. But, you know, we were always in, you know, each other's ciphers. Um, But as adults, you know, we've always maintained contact, you know, and he's a good friend and uh, love that man dearly. So, yeah, that's my maybe not so short list of you know, the friends that are well, in my life that I love. Right. But you see, you didn't tell me the list out. I mean, no, you know, say all my friends. I think the thing was like, well, uh, I don't know. That, that's five entries right there. So I just, instead of getting into a long tire, like I could, I could focus on one and didn't really get into it, but I just decided I didn't, well, I wasn't going to do that. Yeah. So, well, I'm glad you decided that you weren't going to do that and certainly didn't share that information with me before you didn't do it. But, um, there be some surprises, Nana. <laughs> um, let me ask you this What Ooh, questions? What, yeah, questions. Mm. Uh, what makes someone a friend? Like, what makes them? Why would you say that these people, um, are friends as opposed to associates because i feel like anybody you could break bread with is a friend even though you could break bread with associates but when i say break bread i mean i mean intimately like you know invite you to a wedding uh you know your your son's 16th birthday you know the the, the the barbecue you know your, your mother's birthday party things like that you know mm-hmm. those you know are your friends and your friends that uh give you their friendship unconditionally mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and sometimes a test comes like um with um try to think because i think i've had to come through at least once or twice with the exception of James and Joyce, James and Joyce have never called upon me to do anything out of my way special for them. Like they had a crisis and I had to do something uh, mm-hmm. for them. And the same thing for Nut. Nut has never really had a crisis that I've had to be a part of. I mean, right. you know, I've only helped him out in the sense of like, you know, one of his journeys when he was, you know, when he was a young man. And uh, he was like just getting rid of his stuff because he was he was moving out of state and he had a crate of records or two crates of records. And he was like, here, uh, you know, yeah. just, you know, here, you can have these. I'm leaving, you know, and, you know, and that's where it would, you know, he would just give me stuff. And, you know, so but he's never really had a crisis where it's like, yo, man, yo, I need this and everything, you know, um, you know, Pete, not so much. But, you know, hey, I've been there for him the way he's been there for me. Um, Frank also not so much but there's been things that he's needed and it's like okay and you know and I help him out with whatever I can with whatever I have uh, same thing with Damon you know if he needs something there's been you know one incident or two incidences where like yo he needed something he needed it like now you know what I'm saying if I had it so I'd give it you know 
So, you know, I, I think a friend is like unconditional, you know, friendship. I don't think sometimes you get into it with um with friends, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, me and James actually got into it. It didn't speak for a few weeks, maybe a few months once oh, fighting over money, you know, and that's because he felt on his ways because we <laughs> we have a way of poking at each other. We're two bears in a cage and we poke at each other. And I had got the best of him at one point, and in in and, uh, and he owed me money because I won a bet, and he basically told me to my face, "Fuck you, I." Ain't. Yeah, he basically <laughs> told me, "Fuck you, I ain't giving you shit." And looked me in my eye, you know, and and I took that really to heart because I'm like, "Yo, you're not my friend. If you could do that to my friend, so basically you feel like you could you could make a bet to take money out my pocket, and when you lose, tell me, fuck you, I'm not giving nothing. So then you think you can come back tomorrow and do that again? So now basically I'm your sucker. I'm the dude that you could just take money from and steal from. Um, right. And if you feel like that's what you could do, then you're no friend of mine. So fuck." you you know what i'm saying and wouldn't talk to him until joyce had to intervene and say what the fuck is wrong with y'all you know stop this bullshit and she's the one that broke through and got us back together and was like yo and then he and it's why i cherish his friendship so much he finally came to me and he says yo i was wrong i apologize he's and, you know and your friendship is worth more than me than the money I was felt the ways about and stuff like that. And he's like, here's your money. At which point I was like, it's not about the money. It's about you, you know, uh, respecting our friendship and, 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 and enough to apologize and understand what you did and want to make a tone, you know, make a tone for it. And, and that showed me the character of man that he was. And, you know, we're great friends to this day. And, you know, we never brought that situation up, but I, but that's the point. That's the story that solidifies our friendship for me that right. that interaction so yeah that's that's what a friend is i mean just like you nana no tip plenty of people at work that you know i'm friendly and i smile and we key key and all of that but they're not friends and like you know what's going on with me and my job recently and i'm like yo psh, cats is, 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 is snakes all around me so like yo i don't fuck with nobody i smile i say hello we do our job but i don't fuck with nobody like yo because i can't trust none of y'all you know um not to say everybody that works in my building anybody that's seeing this is not you know some of y'all are considered you know truly friends of mine but because i ain't trying to you know purposely you know uh blow the spot up and you know and, and put, put people out there like that i'm not gonna say who i consider snakes but just know the ones that I work closest with are the ones that'll bite you the hardest. Yeah. Um, I asked that question because when I think about friends and I've been actually thinking about friends, it was crazy. Yeah. I thought about friends when I, I got COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you, when I got COVID, I told you COVID had me grabbing my ankles and <laughs> asked me, your daddy, <laughs> COVID kicked my Mm. Oh my God. I, and it kills me because people are like, oh, I had COVID. I didn't even know I had COVID. I had COVID. It's cousins, it's sisters, it's brothers, mm -hmm. yeah. all of it. Um, and during that time, I reached out to somebody that I would have called a friend. And she did what she does, right? Which is when she's happy and involved in a relationship and stuff is going on she's very um mia missing mm -hmm. in action mm -hmm. so like i called her and um she texts me like a few days later hey i'm with so and so and we're going here i missed your call five days ago mm -hmm. at that point um I was like, okay. Um, and then she called me probably two weeks later. Now, the crazy thing is, right, that has kind of been how our friendship has gone. But in this moment of me having COVID, it was like, why am I investing in someone that's not invested in me? Mm -hmm. Because again, this wasn't like a first time thing. This had been her pattern. Um, and so I had to really, really like think about that. Um, you know, does, so that's like, so what makes you a friend? Um, somebody who loves you unconditionally or somebody who loves you when it's convenient? I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so that's one. 
but I, I have another friend. Her name is Sakura. Um, and I met Sakura as an adult a couple of years ago. And when I told her, funny enough, when I told her, and her son calls me auntie, when I told her that I had COVID, she's like, listen, Micah and I will put on our hazmat suits and come over there. And I was like, girlfriend, bye. No. But the fact that she offered and she was serious, right? She was. I knew she was sincere. Um, but that's the Cora. You know, I, she sent me a, a get well card, a feel better card. She, she's always getting me like little. Just she's very thoughtful. Um, and I would say I, I need to be a better friend to her in that way. But she's definitely that person. And also my sweet pea and my baby sweet pea, which is Fatima. Um, I met her when she was interviewing to be the principal at Raina's Middle School. Mm -hmm. And I remember meeting her and she was just determined to that she was going to take this role and she was going to change this school around. And she, at the time she was five. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because she didn't get 10 till later. She was like five years old. And she, and she, you know, she wanted to be principal. And, and after we interviewed her, the board and I looked at each other and we we're like, she's going to stroke out. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, parents are gonna, these parents are gonna put her in a chokehold, mm -hmm. and she is gonna be crying for her, her mama because they go they they go put foot the ass, and it's just gonna that's what it's gonna be. Yeah. And over the years, I had like you know watched parents do that. So the first year she was principal at the school, she was like, "I'm gonna do this without parent input." And the next year when we gave her like a principal rating of zero, she said, okay, so I can't do this without the parents. And then, you know, she called the parents uh, leaders, uh, my friend and, and Kadrimi, and we were like, oh, now you wanna? But over the course of the year, she has really proven herself to be there. Um, okay. So, and when I told her, <laughs> when I told her we had COVID, she was like, um, I can Instacart y'all some stuff. I will have Instacart deliver groceries to your house. What you need? Yeah. Look, like, but she wasn't like, I ain't coming over there. Hazmat suit or not. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted her to. But she, she will, you know, give you the, the dime out of her pocket. She will, she will do anything for you. Mm. And um, and then Tamika, who I met um, when Raina was probably in sec no first grade, mm. you probably met her in the first grade. Um, our friendship is is unique because I love Tamika, mm -hmm. and I want the best for her and. What I think is, what is hard for me, not what I think, but I know it's hard for me to see somebody that I care about, um, allow things to happen to them. Like you just sitting there waiting for people to come by and slap you. Right. <laughs> like you just standing on the corner. No, uh, you know, you have been slapped 10 times. And in fact, people are getting back on the line to smack you and you still standing there. Yeah. Um, and I, ooh, I hope that she sees this, don't take offense. But you deserve more than you allow people to give you. You know, you, t you take things from people that, you know, you don't have to. So I struggle with our friendship in that because, like I said, it's hard to see somebody you care about um, being mistreated. And so a lot of times I don't reach out because, I, you know, I know it's going to be something horrible that I'm going to react to because I'm very... Um, protective of my friends and the people that I care about. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, and, and her, her daughter calls me Auntie Angela too, my Kenzie girl, mm -hmm. uh, who I absolutely love, love Miss Kenzie. Right. And then my girlfriend, Tisa, I met Tisa in high school. Um, we have... <laughs> When I think about the people in my life, and you know, girls are different. I've had more friends be envious of me 
And that may sound conceited, but it's not. It's true. Um, like, so Tisa and I, we started out as really good friends. And what was odd is that, so we used to go to Miami every three, every four months. <laughs> we were in Miami. We went to Miami once and we were so in love. We just kept going back. Mm. And one day, uh, so we were going back for our next trip. And she says, um, what do you like? What do you, how are you wearing your hair? And um, what clothes are you taking? And I was like, that's like, that's a weird question. And she's like, no, because you're way bigger than me way bigger than me and yet every time we go to Miami guys are always talking to you mm -hmm. and I said well maybe you should stop thinking that all men are dogs because as soon as you see them you see a leash maybe they you know get the sense that you you know you, you've got a you know a pooper scooper waiting for them to shit and so you can pick it up I mean I, you know that's real talk but the, but the fact that she had to emphasize how much bigger I was than she was. Um, which, yes, we were both big girls. And, yes, I was bigger than her. Uh, way bigger than her. Mm. You know, I guess that's... You didn't like uh, that. So, no, you know what? I didn't like it in the sense that the way she needed to emphasize it, which I knew was to make herself feel better. So it's like, as big as you are, basically... Why are guys talking to you and they're not talking to me? I mean, and and to me, for somebody that's my friend, that is that is a weird like that was a whole bag of like I'm looking for my I can't find a bag of crazy mm -hmm. because I've never felt that way about friends, right? Um, and so from there, and and there would be things like that, like when I was dating. And when I found out that I was pregnant and she was like, but I, you know, I guess you're happy. And I was like, um, and she was like, well, you know, I mean, it, just the reaction. And then I had to say something to her and then I had to hang up the phone and I, I you know, I called her back and I was like, who do you, like, who do you think you are? So I think, you know, um, we are in a better place today because we're both older and that was 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, so when we talk about unconditional, you know, you know, they love you unconditionally. Like, so is somebody who is envious of you really a friend? Mm. Right. It can be, but you know, if, 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 if your friend shouldn't have those type of motives, I don't think a, a true blue friend is not, is not a copy. I mean, you can have friends and be competitive, like, you know, like or if you're playing your boy and you're playing Madden, Madden or you guys play sports together and stuff like that. I was going to say, Madden, what kind of game is that? Sounds like prostitutes to me. But <laughs> no, not Mac and Madden. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, you know, like if you play your boy on a basketball court, shit, as far as I'm concerned, I ain't never trying to let him win shit. I'm trying to whip his ass every time, you know. I right. mean, that's That's natural competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Competitive competitiveness in the sense that it's you, you you feel toxic toxicity when when it comes to relationships and girls and stuff like that. Like you know, like you don't want to see me win, and if I win and you don't, it's a problem. You know, that's like. And I have seen to surround. I mean, especially growing up, I would say yeah. now now I'm more aware of it. Like I had another friend. Uh, we went to the ice cream store and I was, and this one, I was much bigger than her. I was mm -hmm. a lot bigger than her right. size wise. And so the guy behind the counter and, you know, he's, it's apparent that he's flirting with me, but I'm not flirting back. And, right. um, you know, he gets my ice cream and he's letting me taste different things and she's watching the interaction. He's and she's taste different things. Yes, you know, like you know, going. Let me. What kind of ice cream is that? Let me taste oh, that. Okay. And so she was trying to. Yeah, don't. Ugh, I can't stop. Behave, breathe. And so she would try to interject herself into the conversation, and he was not having it. Right. So, and in my mind, I'm going, why doesn't she stop? So I, but I just keep on. 
So I go, okay, I get my butter pecan, Baskin Robbins butter pecan ice cream. And I say, how much is it? And he says, for you, it's three something. And she goes, is it three something for me too? He said, no, it's $5. Ooh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yo, at that point, I was embarrassed. I just was like, you know what? Like, I just, wow. I was like, oh God. Ground open up and swallow all of us, right? Wow. <laughs> because... Um, but it was like, those are the people, you know, I just, I, I, you know, that would be around me. And I just feel like your friends are not envious of you. Um, they, they shouldn't be, but I also, so, so the catch 22 on that is I know that I think if you called, if I called them on that behavior, uh, uh, you lost your mic. He came right out the... <laughs> I think if I called them on that, mm. especially Tisa, if I called her on that, yeah. she would she would own it. Okay. Like I don't I don't like I think that the envy mm-hmm. comes from a place of internal um insecurities. Um, and not a place of I'm way better than you. Mm. Whereas the other one, yeah, she probably thought she was better than me because she was smaller. But right. it just goes to show you, it's not a, it's not about the size. It's really about you and how you you come across to people. Right. So, like for me, friendship has been really complex. Um, mm. And not okay. in a bad way, in a way that I've learned to, you know, because it's funny, I will always say, I don't call everybody a friend, right? I have people in my life I'm cool with, we might, you know, talk on the phone and everything like that, but they're not somebody I would say, hey, girl, you want to come to my house or let's go and, you know, together. Um, so, yeah, friendship is very complex to me and and really... And even for myself, sometimes, like I say with Sakura, Sakura is ride or die, and I am definitely ride <laughs> and a ride or die. But it's like I like I'm ride or die with okay. Do we have to ride or die now? Like can you, <laughs> can you wait this minute? And if she says yes, then I'm in. Right. But I will go. Okay, is this an emergency? <laughs> and Sakura is not. It's with her. It's. What you need me now? Okay, um, then you come and it's now. But it, it's she is she is one of the dearest people um, to me because there's no pretense, there's no um, there's no nothing. She's 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 just really sweet. She's okay. just really sweet. Awesome friendship. Yeah. So yes, friendship is uh, very complex. Uh, really, because I, I, sometimes I look at other people, and they have these friends from high school or college, and they elementary are, school, preschool. Right, and they are, oh my god! And my girl Leslie, because if Leslie watches this, and I don't mention Leslie, I'm gonna have to go into ooh, the. Ooh, I can see Leslie, you're like you know, ooh, winding up the backhand on you. Like no, so Leslie and I went to high school together. Leslie and I went to Erasmus Hall High School together. We were in choral club together. We were in vocal ensemble together. We were on the um, bowling team together. Uh, we have had, we have had, and have done some things that, whoo, um, yeah. So she, like, we recently reconnected, um, and it's funny because she said to me. Um, not that long ago that her sister, when she got married, she married her high school sweetheart who I knew um, because we were all in high school together and I wasn't in her wedding and her sister was like, why isn't Angie in your wedding? And she was like, I don't know where she is. Like, I can't get in touch with her. I, I, you know, and I don't know how we ended up reconnecting if we saw each other on Facebook or whatever, but we connect like we just talked yesterday, even if it like over the course of the times, it's like I haven't spoken to her in a year. And then I talk to her. It's like we spoke yesterday. 
Okay. But my girl, my girl Leslie is crazy. Mm. Crazy, Wait, deranged, her, her insane. Her family calls. She has a nickname. Oh, what's her nickname? Catcher, catch a case. Catch a case. <laughs> She's gonna kill me. Yes, catch a case. Because even back in the day, the first thing Leslie wanted to do was hit. <laughs> hit like like hit. punch, smack, punch. haul off, mm. haul off. She going all, all the way back downtown, mm. and it's like, zzz. um, and so you know, as she's gotten older. Um, that hasn't really ever left her. Um, so you know, you, I'm always she mindful. Just roundhouse kicking and punching people. Listen, we At 50 were not years old, 54 years old. Well, I told you, kicking people day, down she's... flights of steps. <laughs> I told you the other day. She said we were 53. Yeah, um, I was like, no. If you're gonna shave, shave some meaningful years off. One year ain't enough. No, but okay. Say you're um, 43. You know, shave some, shave some <laughs> meaningful time off of that. So one time we got into it. Um, at the time, her high school boyfriend. We must. We were in the ninth grade, and he was cheating on her, and he was mm-hmm. cheating on her with people in the school. And it's like, dude, that's dumb. Because now the girls are gonna come to Leslie. Yeah, I was with your man. Blah 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 blah. And he was breaking her heart. So mm-hmm. I said to her. Cause she came to me one day and you know, it was like between classes, you know, that's the one thing I miss about high school. Not that I miss high school, but that, you know, that change in classes at the bell and you running and trying to see your people before you go to class. And of course you won't be late cause you know, they're across the quad and you got to get back to your class. But this day we had class in the same hallway. And I said to her, you need to stop letting him drag you around like a puppy. You know, he's, you calling me a dog? I was like, I was like, no, no. Yes, you are. She was, listen, and she was going to fight me in the hallway because she said that I called her a dog because I said, he's dragging you around like a puppy. You have feelings and he's not, and no. She wanted like literally and so at the time because we were freshmen we had like a senior mom and our senior mom had to make us like had to break us apart mm-hmm. and we didn't speak for a good minute wow and i was like how like you know now she now she's not mad at him for cheating and for the the 10th girl this year mm-hmm. to, uh, coming to you telling you about what she did with your man you're mad at me because i said he was driving you, dragging you around like he was treating you like a puppy, and and all you could think of is that I was calling you a dog. That's um, how it be sometimes. I know, but we ended up reconnecting. Um, but yeah, Leslie will help you hide the body too. But she's gonna talk to you. She's gonna talk to you the whole time y'all hiding the body, and sometimes you just gonna spill. I think somebody's coming, Angie, and you'll be like, um, okay, so then we better hurry up. No, no, you keep going. I'll let you know if they're actually coming. Meanwhile, you now you got the handcuffs on, and she's like, I, I, they just snuck up on us, <laughs> girlfriend, girlfriend. Now we enjoy. <laughs> So, yeah, mm. friendships are complicated, especially when you get older, because you like at, at a certain point, you just you have no time for the BS. Yeah. And what you want to give to yourself is, oh, and my friend Ricky, like my guy friend, Ricky's Rick, Ricky's a definitely a, a friend. He's he's a true heart. He's been there uh, not as long as you, Papa, but. I met him, and if I called him right now and said something horrible happened, he would get to me. Mm-hmm. It would take him a while, but he would get to me. Um, but yeah, he's and he's he's been my you know he's been that guy like that I've reached out to. And I mentioned to you before, like you know you having problems with your boyfriend. Uh, instead of calling my girlfriend, I would call him. Mm. Um, because I want to hear it from a male perspective because my girlfriends are going to say, oh, he's horrible. You did nothing. You, it's all him. And he would, you know, listen to the story and like, he actually, he saved me. I don't know if I, I know I never told you this story. So I met this guy and I was dealing with this guy and the guy was kind of like possessive. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was telling Ricky about the story and, uh, 
I was telling Ricky about the story and um, Ricky was asking me questions and he basically knew the answer to. He was like, okay, so the next time you guys go on a date, I'm going to meet you in the city and I'm going to come into the restaurant. I'm going to come over to you, hug you and talk to you. He said, and I'm telling you right now, he's not going to like it. Mm. I was like, really? Like, you know, like, nah, Ricky, you always doing the most. He said, I'm telling you. Um, and we never got to do it, but over the course of the relationship, I was seeing the things that Ricky saw from the, from the one thing that I told him. Um, and he was really like, you know, why you have so many people calling you and why? I was like, "Mm -mm, no, sir, I will not be a fatal attraction show on, um, BET. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, friendships, unique, uh, different, um, those ones you have, you should value them, you know? Um, I, 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 and I'll say this, even if I, I'm not sure if someone's, uh, like the people that I mentioned in our, in our relationship has, have been complex, I value what each of them bring to me. Mm. Um, and like w- one of the things, like when I think about Alan, he just makes me laugh. You, you, you can't, you cannot eat or drink when you're having a conversation with him because you will choke and then you will choke on top of the choke because he'll be like, I guess I'm supposed to do the Heimlich but, or whatever it's called, but uh, I don't even know how to do that. Let me look up on it. Now you're choking, right? So now you're, I mean. <laughs> Let me Google this real quick. Yeah. And now he Hold on, take, he... take a deep breath if you can. Oh, oh hold on, Miss Tucker. <laughs> and you're just and you and the whole time you'll probably be laughing because he will be making you laugh. Like um he used to work at the bridge um for Port Authority, you know, bridge. He used to be a toll collector. Mm-hmm. And there was a big there was a big um shakedown where they had found out it was a uh, like a stealing ring. <laughs> People were stealing money. Mm-hmm. And he said they caught the one guy um so it was like four leaders and then they would like bring different people in so he said this guy when they everybody got caught right one saying lead and the rest saying back up he was like it was it was like mini ripperton la, 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 la. i was dying i mean i was on the floor when he told me stuff. he was like and that's why one i don't he said i don't steal anyway but i you know you gotta be careful who you stealing with because people will start singing and now that's you true. got the least amount of money but you're doing the same amount of time yeah so I, I value what each of these people bring to me okay um yeah that's what's up man i mean <laughs> And our friendship is a whole nother topic. Ooh. Our whole our friendship is a different conversation. It's a different conversation. <laughs> For sure. It's a different conversation. Because it has been uh what well, it has been we, like we said today, we've known each other longer than we've not known each other. Yeah, at at uh, fifty four years old and knowing each other for thirty years, give or take. Uh, we've known each other more than we've not known each other in our lifetimes, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what old age brings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my God. You know, but then not necessarily because I, I, I got, um, when I look at my sons and now that my sons are both, you know, college, uh, college age and in college and um, the little one, especially, you know, Donovan, He has friends that he's known since elementary school that are been here all in college, you know, and Mm -hmm. and it's like, so if you known these guys since you were like five, six and seven years old and now you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you've known these people like pretty much your whole life. You've definitely known them more than you've not known them because you've only gone maybe six years, seven years out of your life not knowing them. And now you're 18, 19 years old. It's like, you know, basically 10 years later, you know. 
mm-hmm. 10, 11 years later, you've known these people more than you've not known them. Right. Hell yeah. So not necessarily an old man's game, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so our our friendship has been a long and um, it's been a good one. Fresh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's, 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 been, it's been a good friendship because it's been without my favorite word when it comes to friendships are unconditional. When it comes to love and friendships, my favorite word is unconditional because when you receive any of those things, it should be unconditional. It shouldn't come with terms you know and and it shouldn't come with ultimatums you know because that's that's not friendship that's not love you know there's mm-hmm. no no ultimatums you either do you know or you don't you know and that's it and that's why i said to you and uh, you know we'll have this that's why i said to you one time when you said and i remember i remember exactly your exact words and you were like you know Uh-oh. get if, ready people if, this is probably gonna be good <laughs> Let's no hear it. no it's not Stop. Just listen um you know what if we tried this out and it didn't work would we be able to be friends and i'm like um it's gonna work it's and you're like but you don't know that and i'm like no it would work and you're like but you don't know that you don't know that like, i do know that and let me tell you why but you just said it you just said it we have been friends for so long and our friendship is genuine and you've seen me at my worst um you know um you know things about me that nobody else knows um and i've seen you be pretty boo-headish um look don't be shitting on my performance snapples okay my performance snapple is very necessary oh like, i'm, I'm you upset that i don't got down. one standing right through right now down. Write it down. Snapple. My performance snapple. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Ooh. I'm gonna write it down. It's a miracle I wasn't traumatized. Um, well, clearly I was a little bit traumatized because I tell people that story all the time. Um, I've seen you be boo headish. I've seen you. Um, I've I've. I've seen, I would say I've seen you at your worst. And I, I mean, I would say um, really like more recently as like we are in our 50s, I've seen you, um, I don't even know how to put it. Forget who you were talking to. <laughs> She's old people. She's no, old. No, no, I've seen you forget who you were talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, but but at the end of the day, um, I there's there's nothing that you could do other than um, there's nothing that you could do that would make me not um, want to be, you know, to change my last name. And and it's gonna work. I already told you. And 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 here's the go. Here's the here's the here's the proof also, right? You just said it, but here's the other thing. So I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the people watching the video. Mm-hmm. One time he asked me, he said, when we were in a plane crash, if we were in a plane crash and I had to eat him, because he he women, he said if he was in a plane crash, if we were in a plane crash. And he died, and I had to eat him to survive. What part of him would I eat first? And I said, <laughs> I said, we were in a plane crash, mm-hmm. and you died. And he said, yes. I said, I wouldn't eat anything because I would be, I would die right behind you. And he was like, what? Like, I'm like, yo, I, you're dead, and I'm gonna be here? No, 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 no. No, no, I'm going to die of a broken heart because you're dead. So I'm not going to eat any part of you because we're going to both be dead. And that's not the answer he was looking for. But that was that honestly was my real answer. And and he knows he cannot die before me. That's a rough one right there. You know, and that's funny because I, I, I laugh at things like that. I laugh because statements like that sound so funny to me. But 
I know that's real because when my mother died and uh, her her estranged boyfriend died soon after, and I'm convinced that man died, man died of a broken heart. Listen, it's true. My aunt died. She had only been with my uncle her whole life. She had never had sex with anybody. And she was pregnant from him when she was 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. So the whole marriage, he died and she was dead maybe six months later. Not yeah. even. Yeah. I've actually seen that at my place of employment, you know, where we have uh, residents and, um, and uh, this one couple, you know, the, I think the husband passed first and then the wife passed soon after. And most people were like, she died of a broken heart. They've been together so long. She couldn't, she couldn't take being going on without him. You know, so yeah, when you so when you make that statement, you know, oh, if I go, oh, you ain't eating no part of me, you know, and you know, and I'm like, all right, I am. <laughs> Listen, I've been waiting 30 years for you to get yourself together. Now all of a sudden, I get you, and you want to know. <sighs> yeah. 30 years I've been waiting, old man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what? And let's, so let's just say let, uh, I haven't been waiting, not doing anything. Like, obviously, clearly. obviously, right. you've spread the skins a couple times along the way. You know what? I can't. You, you just can't ever. But I'm not, I'm not saying that like you were supposed to, because, you know, when I made a decision in my life to move on and I made choice, a choice to be with somebody else and start a family. I mean, I made the best choice for me in my life, you know, at that time. So, you know, I, I mean, what kind of person would I be expect you to say, like, well, you know what? Uh, in the meantime, while I'm doing this. You just sit over there and don't do nothing. No, what kind of shit is that? I mean. That's crazy. You know, my thing is always like, yo, I want you to find love. I want you to be in love and I want you to have a family and I want you to have all the good shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I want that for you, you know, and a friend. If that's what a friend would want for you. Mm -hmm. Although I did tell you as my friend and I, you don't remember this uh -uh, with the face, with the face. Stop it. Because I know you what you're going to say. Oh, yeah. When you walked out of here and I said, you are not going to be happy. If that was, if anything, that was a shitty friend thing to say, to put that on me. You were speaking honestly, though. So that's why I Listen, did. That's why I can't heart. and I won't hold that against you because I know you meant it. That's how you felt. But I'm like, damn, to like to put that on me walking out the door is kind of crazy. No, because nobody is going like, to love you as much as I loved you in that moment. Nobody's going to make you as happy as I felt at 10, you know, that all those years ago. That is going to make you as happy as I could have made you. That is where that came from. Okay. And how dare, and how dare you pick somebody else? <laughs> how, Shit happens. Indeed. That's what happens. Listen, but like I told you earlier, I think the, the other thing is, you know... At that time, I'm not the woman that I was today. So neither of us are. Right. Not that right. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm not the man I, today. Look, certain things, today. certain things that remain consistent, but I'm definitely not the. Uh, I'm definitely a different man that I am. Definitely uh, today, but mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, I mean, right. I, I mean, I mean, and this is the thing that I basically have held true to with me, the part of my personality that I've held true to my whole life is like, you know, not that I don't care about people's feelings because I do. But if I'm making a decision for myself, then at the end of the day, I, I'm making it for myself and that's it. I'm not going to change what I want because you feel bad about it. It's like I'm just not, you know, I'm not living my life for you, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I'm not saying that in, in, in a mean way, though. I mean, even though we make sacrifices and compromises at certain times in our lives for um, other people. I mean, it's like, I mean, my, my general rule of thumb is this. If there's if there's something that needs to be done, regardless of what it is or a decision that needs to be had and I'm involved in it. Right. I may have an opinion about it and want some one particular thing to happen. 
right? And if you want something else, my thing is, if I care about it that much, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay true to my my stance, and I'm not gonna change. But ultimately, and I because I know myself, if it's something I could, you know, and there's a lot of things in my life where I could take it or leave it. It's like, well, you know, it doesn't mean you know it's not the end of my day or whatever. Then I'll concede to you, and I'll be like, well, okay, boom, you know, we'll go your way. And a lot of times, that's how it may happen. I don't get passionate with about you know only so many things, you know, so. I'll say what I want. And if you say, oh, that's what I want too. Hey, yay. Then, you know, you know, we agree. If I say I want something and you say you want this. And then I ask myself again, well, how much does that mean to me that I need to have my way? And if the answer to myself is, eh, it ain't, it ain't going to affect you if you go the other way with the other person's thing. And then at that point, I will compromise, if you want to call it that, and say, okay, it's your way. And, you know, as long as it's a good idea, because if it's a bad idea that you that you want to do, then it ain't, I ain't me- I'm never going to agree to it. Um, okay. But as long as it's viable, you know, mm-hmm. and if it's what you want, and at the end of the day, if I decide to myself, well, it ain't going to kill me to go your way, and I don't care about it one way or the other, then okay, you got it. You go, you know, you know, you'll get your way. You know, you'll you'll your choice will be selected. But psh- Please, but if I make a decision, you know, and, I, and that's what I want, and that's the way it's going to be, it's the way it's going to be, and you're not going to change my mind. And it's like, and, and then when we start turning into other things, and this goes for relationships too, if it starts to turn into other things and other ultimatums, like, oh, well, if you don't do this, then I'm not going to talk to you, or if you don't do this, I'm not going to do that. Well, you know what? I'm kind of like De Niro um, in Heat. And I'm like, yo, if you can't walk away from that shit in 10 seconds and, you know, my outlook will be just be like that. doesn't mean I don't love you, but you know what? I can leave you just as quick. I can be without you just as quick. You know, and that's the core of who I am. You know what I'm saying? I care enough to fuck with you, but if it comes to the point where if I'm making a decision about something and you can't fuck with it and you start throwing all sorts of crazy ultimatums with at me. I'll leave it alone completely. Like, okay, whatever. That's it. I, I don't need to fuck with it. Don't mean I don't love you, but obviously we don't agree. And what you're trying to do is browbeat me and tell me if I don't agree with you, what you're not going to give or what you're not going to do or who you're not going to be for me or what you're not, you know, that's what you're trying to do to me to make me feel bad or sway your way. And if that's what you're doing, well, all right, let me give you what you want as far as like, well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you your ultimatum, uh, your ultimatums <laughs> that you're trying to issue. Let's just skip to the chase. I ain't fucking with you. I'm, I'm leaving this situation I'm not dealing with this And I've always been that way So If you fucking with me You fucking with some pimping I love that statement <laughs> Not that I'm a pimp But um, The essence of that statement is like Look I mean did When I make my decisions If you really fucking with me You'll deal with me even when we don't see eye to eye You'll deal with me You're true, true blue If I could only deal with you because it has to be your way and you're going to give me alternatives if it doesn't go your way then i don't need to deal with, i don't need to deal with you period and that served me well in my lifetime has it really it has yes it served me well because i don't care if it's something i don't want then I don't want it. And you can't give me ultimatums or do things to make me feel like, well, I should do it and then make me feel bad and make me go the other way because you feel like you're going to take something away from me. Like, no, you can't take nothing away from me because I'll let it go. Period. So, so you, so you would, so, so, cause I, yeah, cause I, I, so would you, you would never concede to me. You can see, well, I just go back and watch I'm the video. I, I, I can <laughs> see all the time. To who? To you? How? When? The other day, the other day, where you you decided that you know you didn't want to tell me something because i wasn't paying attention to you even though we got to the bottom of that and stuff like that i didn't brow beat you i let it go but that's not conceding that's your three strikes i'm gonna ask you three times and if you don't tell me after that then i'm gonna let, I'll let it, go. it go i'll let it go right, but that's not conceding that that's not the that's not the situation well then okay well then honestly if you're if you're going to say that me and you have not had 
serious moments like that where compromises needed to be made. I mean, our biggest our, our biggest decisions have been like, what are we going to eat for dinner? You know, saying what time we're going to the movies. <laughs> Those are the biggest decisions that we've had to make. Or uh, the, the the one time where we booked a hotel and it wasn't up to your standards and it was like, okay, we booked it. But then you was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't know where we're going to get the money from, but we ain't staying here. Like, this is like, yo, know, I'll stay. It doesn't have to be a five star hotel, but on, on the three star, two star circuit, it still has to be a certain level. Now, I'm not overly picky in that regard. I'm like, as long as the sheets is clean and the room doesn't look like a murder scene, it's like, you know, I, yeah, I'll, I, you know, I can get by, you know, um, but, you know, you're like, no. It, you, you have a bar where it's like no it, it, it has to be uh it has to be within my standards or i'm not fucking with it period and that i could see that to you like yeah okay ma i'm like wait, wait whatever you want to do ma i just shit I, <laughs> mm-hmm. i'll be beta in this scenario <laughs> Listen, you went to get the salad, and when you came back, I'm like, yeah, we we not in the same room. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> like, no, we we not we not doing I that. Moved, I moved everything by myself. Yeah, moved house. everything. Like, just moved shit. Didn't even, which I could have see that, ladies. That's what men is talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's like, yo. You even though you know Nana is as, as could be as prissy as you want to be, and she could be as girly and pink as as, as the next feminine women. I mean, she is super feminine, you know. So don't get you know don't get that wrong. But with, 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 that, that's the balance that a man is looking for. It's like yo, when 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 when, when shit need to be done, and I'm not around, and you need and you know you want it to be done, do the shit. You know what I'm saying? Period. You know. Brother can appreciate that, you know. So I came back, bags was moved, jackets, everything, nothing like <laughs> nothing in the room. Like you just went and got a cart and moved everything, everything. I sure did. I like, sure well, did. All right, I wasn't happy with the room, and I was like, so we we moved, you know. That's oh it. yeah. Like, okay. he, yeah but yeah, we haven't out. had we haven't had scenario, yeah, serious yeah, scenarios yeah, yeah. where I need to concede to you, but you know, but you've confided in me and you've told me like when we've had those serious man woman talks about attraction and you know what it is about you know personalities that you appreciate about me and stuff like that and you said because you've always shot straight you know like you know even if it feels crazy at first it sounds crazy it's the truth and don't give a damn about it like you know like that that's it you know and so it's like everything from like okay when i made the decision to start a family and said like look you know um you know we're not going to be in a relationship because i'm doing this you know i stuck to my guns and i meant it you know what i'm saying and you know when you know and at that point it's like so you could either you could either be my friend which would be great or you could not, you know what I'm saying? And if you if you choose to go and you know and, and not have contact with me, then I will I will um, I understand it and I will respect it and that's it. I'm and I'm a, whichever way it goes, I'm willing to deal with it. But there's nothing that you could say or do that's going to put me in a position where you can't put any ultimatums on me. You know that about me. About you you, you, you can't do that. You well, can I'm ask not an you, ultimate you, in person. Yeah, you can ask all the questions you want. There's nothing wrong with asking a question to find out where somebody stands or something like that. But mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a person that does not respond to ultimatums, then you know, like basically, you say, "Oh, you, you, you fucking with me? You fucking with some pimping?" Or you know, like so, it's it's kind of like my way of the highway, only in the sense that you know, if you're trying to get a response out of me, if you can't be with me be in my life and be involved with me unconditionally then don't it's as simple as that so the same decision i make up for myself is the same decision you got to make for yourself i'm not giving you what you want or i'm not making you feel the way you want to feel or you, whatever it is however you want to draw it or spin it that's a decision you make for yourself you know and be good good with it right so so here's the thing that i say about that um, or what I will add to that. Yeah. You have always said, and and I say this, uh, oh, and I'm not putting this on tape because I don't want you to be able to say, oh no, did you say Ooh, it? Don't make me put, I got it on hard drive, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> don't do that. Um, 
that you have always treated me uh, with kid gloves. In certain situations, um, yes. Right, in certain situations. Right, but why not treat me like that in all situations? Um, because certain situations are more of a sensitive nature. No, because when I said to you, um, one time I asked you about going to Vegas and your answer, your answer could have just been, no, Nana, I can't go. You said, I ain't going to no motherfucking Vegas. I must have been feeling a ways that day about something. You were feeling a ways. I mean, but okay, you was feeling a ways. And I was like, that was, you know what? It was on New Year's Eve after you were mean to me. It was on New Year's. It was after New Year's Day when you were mean to me. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I was not mean to you. You were mean to me. I was not mean to you. You were not intentionally mean to me. That that was not what you were trying to do. This is what I, you were mean to me. This is the merry-go-round that is us people. You were mean. You were not nice. I was not mean and I was as nice as you know we could be. It's just like you had a different perception. I said tomato, you said tomato. You know, mm -mm. that's it. Mm -mm. I said macaroni and cheese, and you said spaghetti and meatballs. <sighs> Whatever. All I know is I was there. <laughs> I was there. We're going to put it out there one day and we're going to let people tell us in the comments whether or not they thought that you were mean. You know what? In the next video, we're going to post that at the very beginning. We're going to pose the question and we're going to ask people to respond to it in the next question. And maybe, you know what? We'll do a little 10 minute segment on that scenario just so people that, you know, that video will be isolated and people can respond to that scenario. So actually, I'm going to write that down because with the next segment mm -hmm. we're going to do is going to be about that scenario. I'm going to write it down right mm -hmm. now. Scenario. What's the scenario? Oh, I like that. Ah, uh, right. That should be a segment. What's the scenario? Scenario. Mean or not mean? Okay. Boo so right, New Year's. Or not who? Was this another Snapple incident? Was this another Snapple gate? Snapple gate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The very next segment. The very the very next segment we we film. And I don't think I don't know what we're gonna do it today, but if not today, the very next time that we record. We're mm -hmm. gonna pose that scenario. We're gonna put we're gonna mm -hmm. set it up and we're gonna ask the people who view to respond and then we'll do another segment where we respond to the responses and we'll read them out and see what they say and and, and, and you know and, and i do believe that most people are going to side with me i'm putting it out there mm -hmm. say you just being in your and feelings. i believe in, and i believe in seeing the clothes and so do i i believe in the two fairy <laughs> He, he need to bring me some money for this tube that's missing out my okay. head right now too, yeah, you know, so I get my joints fixed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> no, I don't believe that people are going to, like I said, I don't think it was intentional. I'm not saying you intentionally hurt my feelings. I think in that moment, you would just, you were, you had a momentary um, uh, lapse in, um, what is the face for? Um, what face? That you like, like I'm not making what is a she face? trying to say? Like, uh, uh it's like, what is she trying to say? Okay, I'm oh, looking well, yeah, at yeah, the yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the face. Um, you had a momentary um, thoughtless moment and didn't think Are about, we about what New Year's. Did. Yes. You need to stop and we'll address it in another video. You're ridiculous. Like, no, really, really, really? Did you just really call? Did you just call me ridiculous? I did. Like, really? Like, come on. Really? How is that ridiculous? Ridiculous. 
How is that ridiculous? I'm not getting into it. We'll save it for the next mm-hmm. segment. I'm not even going there. I'm not. Really, oh, nope. Uh, nope. 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 But you know, I'm going to ask when we stop filming the segment. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you you better not start on camera. Don't eat, don't even do it. Uncross your arms. Like don't you? Ooh, there, there we go. Y- y'all see that? You see that, people? You you you, you heard that? You, you little, the tongue on the top of the roof or the mouth of the thing that I make a jig and a jig. That yeah, the, uh, yeah. That's that 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 Brooklyn. That's that black girl. That's that black girl magic. That's that you know. Yeah. Yeah, we go. And, and this is, see, she gonna subtly throw up two fingers, but I knew the two was really the one. You know, Let's see. Mhm, mhm. You see, I feel like Bernie Mac. You gotta help me, America. You gotta help me. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Don't side with crazy. Help me, America. <laughs> Don't side crazy. with crazy. When you see crazy coming, close the door. Well, if that's their case, they're putting their hand up on your side of the screen, like, like, Listen, block her out. The numbers won't lie, and neither will the comments. How about that? Well, I'm kind of actually low-key scared because I know there's mm-hmm. more women out there than men, and <laughs> um, it is a good chance that no. the people looking at this may be female, and there's a good chance that they may... Uh, rock with you but you know my dudes like I said when you hear the scenario it, it, you're all gonna roll your eyes like yo yo bruh please like really like oh my god this but is listen to me I I'm said listening. yeah I'm listening I said that it was not intentional like why can't you just own that I didn't I, you, your response I, wasn't it, intentional or what what you perceived no, or what, but, what I did intention not intentional <laughs> No, I don't think that you... So, I said you were mean to me, right? Yeah. But I don't think that you were intentionally mean to me. That is not who you are. I wasn't mean to you. I wasn't mean. Okay, I perceived it as... You know what? That's just like somebody saying, oh, she was so disrespectful to you. And you're like, I didn't see it as disrespect. It's not... It's how you perceived it. I felt that it was mean. This is what I... Okay, I'm done. And with that, we will my, talk about it. <laughs> very next segment. Very next mm-hmm. segment. All right. Nana. Good talk. Uh-huh. Look, okay, Rock. Wow. I never you see, you, 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 <laughs> you see what I'm getting? You, you you see what we're getting? This is not professional. This is not professional <laughs> behavior. <laughs> But this is what we are. That's what that's what this that's what this this, this YouTube videos or whatever what platform this is on. This is what this is about. The real interaction between me and Nana. Mm-hmm. And who is Nana? You. Oh. Uh huh. And who am I? The old lady that be trying to coerce and, and, and manipulate. Who you? You old lady. <laughs> Bye. Look, deuces. Bye, Nana. Mm -hmm. Rat bastard. (laughs) 